So the cabin I want to build is in the style of Dick Prenicky. I'm in interior Alaska, and the logs you see here are black spruce. Now black spruce isn't typically used as cabin logs, but that's what I've got, so that's what I'm going to use. It tends to grow in very dense stands, and I'm going to have to search for logs big enough for a cabin. Now I wouldn't have jumped behind this tree if I didn't know I couldn't push it over. It really wasn't that big. After every tree was dropped, I had to limit with my axe and then use my draw knife and shave a small portion down the spine of the tree. Then I could use my bark spud to loosen up the bark and then peel it off. The chainsaw I'm using here is an Echo. It's a CS400 with a 16 inch bar. I've really fallen in love with this chainsaw. I've been running a chainsaw for over 25 years and I've always used steel chainsaws until my last one blew up. But we've had really good luck with these Echoes after finding one at a yard sale and wow, it's been great. This is a good eight incher here. I'm looking for logs between 6 and 8 inches in diameter, which is pretty much all I have to work with, best case scenario, in this stand of spruce that I'm logging. My initial goal was to get about 50 trees on the ground. I started logging the second week of July, and the sap is still running. This is why I'm able to peel the bark from the logs instead of dry scraping, which this is. Beyond spring and early summer, the bark will tighten up, and you have to draw a knife absolutely every inch of that log to get the bark off. It's back breaking work. So being able to do it like this is an absolute game changer for your workload. A good little buddy is really helpful too. Logging in a dense stand of trees is really difficult. You've got to get your lean right, and you've got to hit your openings whether you made them or they're natural. And when it all comes together, it just feels great. Those logs were so wet with sap, they might as well have been greased pigs, but it sure made the business of getting the bark off amazing. Something very satisfying about that. Breeze is nice, but it's not good for felon. My goal was to drop and process five trees a day, which would make it 10 days for me to log the 50 I needed. Every day had its share of challenges. Come on. I really enjoyed the hard work and feeling my body take the toll. There's something incredibly rewarding about doing something hard and, and doing it until it's done. This right here, that's lager food. These logs weigh several hundred pounds a piece, and the best way I found to maneuver them was by leverage. So I had a spruce pole that I used religiously. It was, it was definitely my helper. There was so much sap on these trees that as I draw shaved them, it would actually spray me in the face. And that's what I was trying to capture here. 
My main tools were a 12 inch draw knife and a Collins boys axe, along with a bark spud and a pair of gloves that really took a beating. If I ever wanted to do a sod roof, I have all the moss I could ever want. But in the meantime, it made a great spot to just lay down and look at the sky and take a break. But as you can see here, it's better to be moving. Every single tree that came down needed to be limbed, and all those limbs needed to be picked up. The branches were placed in a pile and they'll be burned either during heavy rain or in the winter when there's lots of snow. The upper parts of the tree were trimmed for poles for firewood and then the top of the tree was all that was left. We need a Christmas tree. <laughs> As you can imagine, the smell from those fresh cut trees was really great and the silence of the forest was really enjoyable. My gloves and tools and pants, everything was completely covered in sap. I even had to trim about an inch off the bottom of my braids. I'd like to build about a 12 by 16 cabin and judging by the size of the logs I got, that's probably as big as I'll be able to build. I've never built a log cabin before, so I'm figuring it out as I go. But all I know now is I need logs, and I need a lot of them. I'll worry about everything else as it comes along. The next step of this process is to stack these logs for the winter and come back in the summer to build my cabin. That'll give them plenty of time to dry out and do all the shrinking they need to do before I get started. So far I've been able to harvest 52 logs for this project and if you'd like to see a deeper dive video into the logging, go ahead and check out the video in the link below. So that was phase one of this cabin build. Whoa, glad that's over. If you want to see how I'm going to move these logs and stage them for winter, stay tuned to the next video. And thanks for watching, guys. Until then, scroll in the woods. She gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy.